And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's Rowdy.com pre-race show, getting you ready for the five-hour energy 500 from Pocono Raceway, two-and-a-half-mile track. And you better have a couple of five-hour energies sitting by because you're going to need more than one. Long, tough day. But what makes it really tough, I think, is the fact that this track is shaped like a triangle. Three straights, three corners. All the straights are different lengths. All the corners are different lengths and different amount of banking in each one. There is no way to have a perfect race car all the way around this race track. I love this track. I love the uniqueness of this track. It's different than any place else we go on the circuit. And because each of the corners are different, you kind of have to make a choice as to which corner you want to set up for. Some guys will tell you it's the tunnel turn, turn two. Some guys will tell you it's turn three because turn three sets you up for that long front stretch. The longest straightaway in NASCAR the racing. The longest straightaway in the history of the world. Denny Hamlin, very successful here. He talks about compromise at Pocono. Yeah, it's definitely a long, tiring race, that's for sure. Uh, that race is a really long distance. Um, you know, it takes a lot of stamina, but you just got to maintain focus, try to get your car to work the best it can in all three corners, and that's the trick of it is, you know, a lot of times when you fix one corner, you mess up another, and that's... Uh, it's a really hard balance for the crew chiefs. So I, I think you look at turns two and turns three. Uh, I, three is interesting to me because it's the flattest corner and the longest corner on the course. And if you're able to get in there early, it's very easy to overdrive that corner. You get in there early and you get out of the gas soon. Then you get back on the gas a little sooner, maybe even half throttle through the middle of the corner and then get back on the gas. The sooner you're back on the gas wide open, essentially what you're doing, Cutler, is you're making the the straightaway longer. Which is already the longest in NASCAR, so you're taking that long straightaway, making it even longer. And you can make up a lot of time that way if you can exactly. mass the three. So I'm inclined to think turn three. I, I kind of agree with you, though. Neither you nor I have ever driven on this track, and somebody who has is Kurt Busch, and he disagrees with us. Pocono is one of those tracks where um, it's so very different. It's like um, it's its own unique identity, and with the three corners being very different, turn one, very bumpy, high bank, high speed, and you get to turn two, which I think that's the most important turn at Pocono, the tunnel turn. Uh, you know, that corner gets real slick. As the race progresses, it's tough to gain time through there, but it's really easy to lose time. And then you have the long sweeping turn three, that, uh, that's a challenge. Some drivers love the place, some drivers hate it. Uh, like Denny Hamlin, I think he went there his first time and won. Carl Edwards did the same thing. I've had a good amount of success there. It's, um, it's one of those places where if you, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you're always fighting that uphill battle. On the other hand, Kevin Harvick, he's driven here as well, and he actually does agree with us. So there, Kurt. Yeah. To me, the, the hardest part is, or the most important part is, is turn three and just being able to get in a corner and get roll through the center of the corner and get back to the gas. So if you can get back to the gas, it makes that straightaway that much longer. And, and uh, that's, that's the most important part is getting down the front straightaway and getting off turn three. So we talk about compromise in the corners, getting through two, getting through three. But don't forget, you know, turn one can be tricky as well because that long straightaway, you get down to one, you're going about 205 miles an hour. Yeah, and you don't think necessarily of brakes to the extent that you would at a place like Martinsville, but because of the speed you pick up on that front stretch and having to woe down in time for turn one, brakes do become a factor We've at this seen, track. We've uh, seen a brakes break <laughs> there. I mean, Jeff Gordon, you I remember. You spell those differently. You, you do, but he, he had a rotor explode down there and took a very hard hit up into the wall. 2006, so, right? I believe so. So it, it's a tough, tough place if your brakes aren't working well. you got to... Actually, be conscious of that. You need to save your brakes or not overuse them, not get down in there too deep. Bobby Labonte says that straightaway, it can actually be kind of intimidating. You come off a flat corner, which is pretty slow, but you pick up so much speed down the front straightaway that it's just, I mean, it is forever, forever, forever. And then you just, oh, my gosh, I got to let off here. Oh, I'm probably going about 205. And, I mean, it's hard on the brakes, getting a turn and everything. So you just got a lot of time to think about turn one. So best thing to do is probably not think about it, but it's a long enough straightaway. You can't ignore that, that you're going to be hauling butt when you get down there. Now let's talk about some of the features of this racetrack that maybe we haven't mentioned so far. That sole patch, Cutler. Yeah. They put a patch of asphalt down there getting into turn three, and for a while, guys were actually y getting up on that because it just, as new asphalt, it had a little more grip and allowed you to get through that corner a little faster. That's something interesting to watch because 
as it wears, it loses grip and maybe becomes less of a factor. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a factor to the extent it has been in years past. It's been there for a few years now, and I think the grip level has, has degraded enough that it's almost the same as the rest of the track. What will also be interesting yep. to watch uh, for this race is the driver's ability to shift. NASCAR has given them that back. They haven't had it for a while at Pocono. But they just changed the gear ratio, basically. They, they did, but Greg Biffle said it may lend itself to a little more passing. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I'm not sure we'll see more passing because of that, but if Greg says so, maybe we will. I mean, the other, the other thing you got to look at at Pocono, I think, is pit strategy. We've seen two fuel mileage races in a row, and we know that on this two-and-a-half-mile track, cars get strung out, and we can see long green flag runs. Fuel mileage can become an issue. What have we seen in the last couple of races? With this new fueling system, guys not being able to get their car totally full of fuel, which impacts how they do in a fuel mileage situation or just simply on a long run. So I think that could be a factor here at Pocono. The other thing that I think is interesting about pit strategy at this racetrack is you have a little bit uh, more ability to make changes and to make significant changes and to tune on your car because you probably won't go a lap down. Remember uh, when Dale Earnhardt Jr. changed his shocks at this race? Well, he didn't change them. They were changed on his behalf right. without going a, a lap down. Well, let's talk about drivers. Junior is not really a guy you'd think about no. here at Pocono, but the guy that stands head and shoulders above anyone else is Denny Hamlin. Yeah, he's almost batting 500 at this racetrack. Won it, I think, the first two times he, did. he visited mm -hmm. here. From I the mean, pole, I believe. He owns this place. Yeah, 4 out of 10 for Denny Hamlin. And looking to get into the top 10 in points after a slow start to the season, he's one point out. Got to expect he'll be in the top 10 by the end of the day. And, and, and even certainly if, one of the favorites for the win. Even if he doesn't end up in the top 10, securing a win, which he could easily do at Pocono, will bode well for him as we get to the chase. Absolutely. And Denny was asked, well, why are you so good here? Some racetracks just suit drivers' styles better than others, and this one in particular just really lends itself to the way I particularly drive. So it's tough to say what it is or where we're making up all of our time, you know, or where we're really good at, but it just seems like all around it's just we've got everything on uh, all eight cylinders here. Now another guy you got to look at I think is Kurt Busch because just a few weeks ago, the team was struggling. He was angry on the radio every week. But after a pretty good run at Charlotte, winning the pole and having a great run at Kansas, even though he didn't win the race, all of a sudden he's turned things around. Then you look at his Pocono record, two wins, four second-place finishes. Kurt Busch could be very good here. He, he could be. We've watched him from the stands at Pocono dominate a race here. It was one of the early races where, with he and Pat Trison working together, and I remember it very well. He, he has dominated here before. He could do it again. Now, Jimmy Johnson hasn't been as strong maybe at the last couple of racetracks as we might have expected, but he's got a great record at Pocono. Two wins, a very, very solid finishing average, a lot of top tens, I think something like six or seven in a row here. So Jimmy's a guy you got to keep your eye on. Tony Stewart has two wins here. Jeff Gordon's got at least two wins, maybe more. So those guys are all guys you want to keep your eye on. But and to me... The Fords are intriguing. The Fords are intriguing, especially Carl Edwards, because he does have two wins here. Right. He's been running very well. He was third the last time we raced here, or race his teammate Greg Biffle won. So I like Carl Edwards to be with Kurt Busch and Denny Hamlin. Yeah, and especially with those FR9 engines on that long front stretch, it is a place where you think maybe a little bit of a stouter uh, power plant could, could uh, be of, of help. And also, Greg Biffle, we should mention him because he did win this race, or he did win the last time we were at Pocono, which was the second race last year. So I like Greg Biffle a lot here, too. All right, that's been your Rowdy.com pre-race report for the Pocono for the 5-Hour Energy 500 from Pocono. For the five hour energy 500. For the five hour energy 500 from Pocono. Where there are three corners. And probably a four hour race. Like my hat. You don't have a hat. It has three corners. The one I. Never mind. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.